If you like things rough. If you like things tough. Get ready for Bone Crunching Rugby League on Sky Sports. The action kicks off today with the second division final. Then we return to Old Trafford as Wigan clash with Castleford for the Premiership. And tomorrow it's live to Australia as their two greatest rivals clash in the state of origin. The roughest, toughest weekend of rugby league today and tomorrow on Sky Sports. However good you look, there's always room for a little improvement. Now with even more refinement, the new generation clear. The new Aquafresh Flex and Direct has a unique directable head for cleaning those hard to reach places. Let's test how good it is. First the brushes tackle the ramp. How's that for cleaning? Next the pipes. Clean through. Then into the slalom. Watch that head bend. And finally, the tomato test. That flexible neck is so much kinder to gums. The new Aquafresh Flex and Direct cleans brilliantly because it uses its head. KFC's new fabulous family feast is our biggest value yet. All this for only $9.99. KFC, where great value never tasted so good. At the Pons Institute, women were given the chance to test our advanced new moisturizer with AHA. In 24 hours, the tests revealed measurably smoother skin, a renewed youthful freshness, and a visibly more radiant complexion. New Pons Performance Age Defying Complex. For more information, call us on 0800 240 400. This man eating alligator is caged. Calls to talking pages, however, are free. The alligator's free! No, 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 no. Talking Pages is free. Ah, call Talking Pages free on 0800 600 900. From the Sky Satellite Network, this is Sky Sports. Seize the day. Ago, 
to compete the divisional final against Featherstone Rovers and they have emerged from Division 3 to the big league in just two years. Des Drummond knows what it's all about. He was in last year's final and here in 1987 at Old Trafford in the very first Premiership final for Warrington against Wigan. 40 tries this season for Mark Johnson, new try-scoring record holder, beaten the 27 by John Crossley in 1982-83 season. He's the joint leading scorer in the game with Singinellis of Castleford. And Singinellis, of course, plays in the big one later today. This is the London side, Stoop, Gallagher, Roskill, Campbell, Johnson, McIver and Riley. And up front, Whiteley, Scott, a Carter, Rotherham, Rosalind, Stewart the captain and Neville Ramsey. And the substitutes, Chris Smith and Jeff Luxon. And a great way for Tony Gordon to bow out as the Crusaders coach. Jed Byrne with the football, the loose forward, formerly with Wigan. He has played on plenty of big stages in his time. Here's the team that has emerged from Division 2 as champions. Mulligan, Drummond, Kay, Burns, Cocker, Kitchen and Marwood. And up front it's Pickering, Mackenzie, Armstrong the skipper, Heapy, Oglenby and Byrne. And on the bench, Peter Riley and Paul Penrice. And Peter Walsh, the Australian coach of Workington Town, who is relishing the chance of taking on the biggest in the big league. Match referee is the referee of the year for a second successive year, John Connolly from Wigan. Can't take control of the big one because Wigan are in that, but this one will do. It's Workington Town who will get this match underway and the atmosphere immediately builds. We're exclusive here at Old Trafford for this, the second division's biggest day. A big day indeed for London. And I wonder how much nerves will play a big part. Interference at the play of the ball. No, he's ruled a knock on. Well, well in the prop forward, Chris Whiteley just lost it. It's Marwood who feeds the scrum, Marwood who gets it away to Wayne Kitchen. Good tackling by the London Crusaders. They are certainly built up for this. They really are, as are Workington Town, and no wonder because they've got something like five or six thousand fans down here at Old Trafford with them. And there is Martin Oglenby, the second division's player of the year. In the second row for Workington Town, but the touch judge on from the far side, he's seen an infringement here. The loose forward, Neville Ramsey it is, that comes in quite late. There you can see a bit of a flop. A facial touch judge on very quickly well we said would nerves play a big part their first ever final workington of course they were here at the same time last year and that should be an advantage to them mark mulligan the fullback has chimed in with 23 tries this season and here is James Pickering, the biggest of the big stars in the Workington Town side. Mackenzie, the hooker, taking it on his own from Dummy Half. Good play in the end from Sam Stewart to hold him up. There's Mulligan again. Now the captain, Colin Armstrong. Good defence from London, though, moving up very quickly. Ramsey leading the way. Swarming round the man in possession. It is now Marwood. He is Kitchen. And he gives it to Oglenby. First touch for him. Lovely movement from them. This is the winger, Stuart Cocker. Cocker with 33 tries under his belt this season. One of the few players in this Workington side who weren't involved in the divisional final 12 months ago. Gallagher quickly in on the tackle, along with Logan Campbell. Cocker is the man who's gone into dummy half for Workington Town. Here's Mulligan, the fullback, under pressure then from the hooker Scott Carter got the kick away it bounces back on Workington side to Drummond it's play on says the referee he's under pressure from Stoop but no the referee tried to allow the advantage Drummond was caught in possession it's the turnover well it was a great kick and it bounced off a working in loose forward Jed Byrne it was 
the referee in there from John Connolly picked that up very quickly. Marvellous to see these two sides from Division 2 on the bigger stage. And what a bonus it is for the men in black from London. 14 years since they began as Fulham, they are finally in one of the game's big finals. Great boost for the game in the capital. Great boost for the game in this country. Tremendous to see them there. This is Sam Stewart, their captain. Big, raw bone, second row forward. 16 New Zealand caps. Good movement from the Crusaders. This is Scott Ruskell. He has some pace, and Mark Johnson most certainly has out wide. Good tackling, though, by Workington, Drummond, and the Kitchen in there quickly. This is the last tackle for London. The chip forward bounced back. The referee still holds up the hand signaling five tackles. It bounces off the head of a London player. <laughs> and Colin Armstrong of Workington picks up the loose ball. Did well there, did Armstrong, under a lot of pressure. This is Cocker. Lovely jinking run from Cocker. An inspired signing at the start of this season from Oldham, Stuart Cocker, 33 tries. Armstrong drives Workington into the London half of the field. Here's Jed Byrne, he's at the heart of everything for Workington. Lovely run down the touchline, Paul Drummond inside him. Byrne's going alone, and Byrne scores the first try for Workington Town. That was experience showing there for all to see. Marvellous try from Byrne. They don't come any better than this, the experience of Byrne showing through the dummy. He makes the break, he uses Drummond to Byrne on the inside. And Andre Stoop, he took the dummy and paid the price. But what a great try. Long ball out wide, you'll see the loose forward throw the dummy. And off he goes. The prop forward, Chris Whiteley, did not fill the gap. And look at that dummy. And Andre Stoop is left clutching thin air while this man takes the four points. Jed Byrne celebrates his third consecutive divisional final here at Old Trafford. Tremendous effort from him. And Dean Marwood will try and add the extra two, but he's tight on the touchline. That's the angle he has. It's on its way and it's got chances too, but the touch judges wave the flags away and it's 4-0 Workington. Notice how the loose forward uses Drummond as a dummy and Stoop takes it. Superb play, the experience of all those years paying off on that occasion. Great start for Workington Town then, the champions of the second division, exactly what they wanted in the big time for the first time in 10 years and of course they came so close but there is a bad mistake by Mulligan a bad call I was going to say that Workington came so close to glory in this match last season when they lost to Featherstone Rovers but this a horrendous mistake well he shouted for it the other boy didn't get out of the way Mulligan should have taken control how often do we see that from the kickoff after a side has just scored a try? Here's Logan Campbell. Tips the ball back inside. Lucky for London. They've kept uh, possession, but quickly let's go downstairs to Bill Arthur for news of a substitution. Scott Carter hasn't lasted very long in this game. There's 14, Chris Smith, who is on in place of Scott Carter, who it, it's thought has sustained a nasty ligament injury very early in the game. So really not going well for London yet. Yes. That's the worst possible news. They've had to make the change so early in this match. Only seven minutes gone, but they're trying to bounce back here with a try now. It's the strength of the workings in defence. And it was Chris Whiteley who they held up. This is Dixon McIver. And London are within eight metres of that Workington line. It's Neville Ramsey who spins the ball into the arms of Stewart. Stewart does it for Has he got in, Johnson? He come up with his 41st try of the season not only does he level matters up here 
He throws the gauntlet down to Sinjanellis of Castleford later. Super kick through there from the second row of Sam Stewart. But what on earth was Des Drummond thinking here? Oh, dearie me, that was a bad mistake. And Johnson in for the first, the 41st try of the season. But it was a well-timed kick. But Drummond, oh, he made a real meal of that. Mark Johnson, the new try-scoring record holder for the club. Joint leading try-scorer with Sinjin Ellis. Now leading try-scorer in the big league on his own. And Des Drummond reflecting on one of the biggest blunders of his season should have fallen on that ball and tidied up the danger instead of that tried to hack it out and now we know that Johnson was lurking right behind him so John Gallagher 154 goals this season he scored in 32 consecutive games now and it bounces over off the top of the crossbar and he scored now in 33 consecutive games he gives London the lead Look at the kick here. Inches on the top, hits the post and goes over. Superb kick. Tremendous stuff. Bounced off the angle, didn't it? And eventually sailed over. And it gives London the lead. Six points to four. Nine and a half minutes gone. Here at Old Trafford. Great start from these two sides. Who you may remember in March on Sky drew 20 points apiece in the second division and it was John Gallagher's drop goal attempt that time that hit Woodwork and came back off the post and cost London in the end promotion but here's a high tackle on the substitute Chris Smith Brad Heppy was a second rower the intent was there a few words from the referee John Connolly but what a bad mistake from that kickoff Workington had just scored the first try and the fullback Mark Mulligan spilled the kickoff. And from there, London got what they deserved. That was a great try, but a bad mistake from Drummond. It's Dave Rotherham who picks himself up. Neville Ramsey is the dummy half. And here now is Rosalind. Good tackling by Tony Kay. The scrum half is Mark Riley, and he is a very dangerous customer lovely run but he just slid on the turf here and his foot straight over the white line he tried to come back inside but the there you see the left foot over the touch line good player mark riley he's had a good season Be a good contest between dean marwood and mark riley this afternoon logan campbell doing the tackling on marwood Good defence as well from London, the second marker working very hard. Traditionally over the years, as Oglenby takes that ball up for Workington Town, this match has been perhaps the highlight of the day here at Old Trafford. The major final, the first division tussle that has followed these second and divisional finals has struggled a bit to reach the standard of these, but I'm sure that uh, today we're expecting a big one between Wigan and Castleford and certainly these two sides from Division 2 as we see this run from Andre Stoop have set a standard Steve already that they will try and follow it's been a great start from both sides the crowd anticipating a strong game first 10 minutes two tries both sides keen to keep the ball alive but as you can see there it's quite slippy it was Chris Whiteley who just couldn't hang on to the ball back inside. The ball passed in from Gallagher. You can see looking at the defence coming towards him. Very slippy conditions. Expect plenty of mistakes. Live here at Old Trafford watching as Wayne Kitchen heads for the line. Desperate defence from London Crusaders to keep him out. But Workington, oh, that's a good play at the play of the ball. Hacked back, but it's now with Oglenby. They have six to go here, Workington Town. Byrne trying to open something up again. Second rower is Brad Heffy. He's pulled down. Marwood quickly to Mulligan. The support there from Kay, but London working hard in defence. 
Sam Stewart is leading by example, as is Neville Ramsey. Good defence, London are going very low. Mackenzie gets the ball out to Byrne, and the forward for Tony Kaye's in. Tony Kaye with the second Workington try. Was the final pass to him forward? John Connolly was spot on and said no. Great play from the loose forward, Jed Byrne, a nice little pass. See how he just holds it up there, the centre Tony Kaye. That is good support play. But Jed Byrne, he's having a brilliant game so far. The run from the hooker, Phil McKenzie. But look how the loose forward does exceptionally well there. And that is a good try, well played. Run from the hooker, notice how he brings the defence in. You've got to make sure you get it. Bit dubious that last pass, not according to the referee, John Connolly. So Tony Kay, formerly with Barrow, two spells and St. Helens. And this time the kick finds the mark. Tremendous kick from Dean Marwood. Great reply from Workington, 10-6. And London in trouble because they have injuries on the field. They're in desperate straits, both subs are on, I believe, Bill. Yeah, the problem's really mounting for London Crusaders because Riley, number seven, has, who has been influential so far in the game, has already had to come off. It looks like an ankle injury for him. And on has come the other substitute, number 15, Jess Lutzen. So they've lost already Scott Carter with a knee injury and now Mark Riley, their influential scrum half. It really isn't looking that clever for London Crusaders. So both Chris Smith and Jeff Luxon on. And there is Jeff Luxon, number 15, just getting up out of the tackle. But that is a big blow that Mark Riley has had to leave this field and also they've lost their hooker, Scott Carter. Big blow for London and trailing by 10 points to six. And Workington looking to go one better from their defeat here by just four points against second division champions Featherstone Rovers 12 months ago. Mulligan with the kick downfield to his opposite number, Andre Stoop. Stoop, who had a spell, of course, with Wigan. Gallagher is the dummy half. He switches the ball this way. Pretty difficult for the Crusaders to lose two key players. When you lose your halfback and hooker, that's where most of the attacking play comes from. It's controlled by those two. So we a little bit disorganised London, I'm afraid. And Workington are roaring into the tackle here. They're keeping London pen back in their own half of the field. That's Dave Rotherham, the dummy half. He gives it to Ramsey, who gives it to Stewart. They're trying hard. They have Logan Campbell as their runner. He tries to get through Drummond. Drummond missed him first time. And with a bit of help from his friends, Drummond is trying to haul the man into touch. And the referee has allowed it did not call hell that was great defense there and while ever the player is still moving and struggling then you're allowed to do what you like with him and the working in defense did Stewart tried in vain to drag the center back Wayne Kitchen with the long cycle shorts Dean Marr with the dummy half Martin Oglenby the next receiver and didn't he receive a reception from three crusaders defenders right on the halfway line here's armstrong the captain of workington pickering now he had a big game in this match 12 months ago and he is a big favorite but he's lashing out with his boots there but the referee says that the crusaders play was all over him Neville Ramsey picked out by the referee, John Connolly. Well, Ramsey throws it right away, and you can see the prop forward use the elbow, then the legs. Miltick, for all it was worth, but he did not release the man. John Connolly had no hesitation. And surely Workington will go for the two points on hand here. Indeed so. Dean Marwood from just about bang in front and 31 meters out one from two today baby face scrum half isn't he dean marwood it's on its way and it just scrapes over the top of the bar 12-6 workington 
joy on the terraces amongst the travelling army of fans. And there's Mark Riley being patched up on the bench for London. They will be desperate to try and get him back if they possibly can. The New Zealander has attracted some first division interest this season. He's the top scoring scrum half in the game and he's so important to the London cause. But it looks a hopeless case at the moment. He doesn't look too happy about it. A big blow to the Crusaders' chances. But they will not throw the towel in. They have not come all its way. Not to play their part. So match this that spans the length and breadth of the big league country. London 6, Workington 12. The champions of the second division against the team that finished third and so nearly got first division rugby league into the capital city of this country making their comeback of course in the second division next season as the London Broncos and they are prepared to slug it out here with Workington Town head to head it's Phil McKenzie lovely ball from McKenzie that's Paul Burns the center for Workington Hall down McKenzie busy off the knees of Gallagher and McKenzie gets it back it's still the last tackle though because Gallagher made no attempt to play at that ball it went straight to Gallagher and bounced back so it's the turnover well there's a ball there you can see that Gallagher made no attempt the ball playing the man good refereeing there from John Connolly midway point just about in this first half Mark Riley's off the field for London he's with Bill Mark, you've had that ankle patched up. How does it feel? Yeah, it's not too bad at the moment. Um, I think I've gone over and done my ligaments, so hopefully I can walk around and free up a bit. It's been a, a dreadful start from that point of view. You're off. Um, Scott Carter's off as well. It's up, you're up against it already. Yeah, Wigan has full credit to them. They started really well and we've just come up with two major injuries and uh, so hopefully we can get together and uh, you know, get some points on the board before half-time. Yes, they will have to try and get themselves back on level terms by half time london crusaders but with those two crucial injury blows it's a, it's a big test of any side to lose a hooker and a scrum half but they are rolling forward now with andre stoop johnson was outside and stoop decided to take them on out wide and it's a great tackle from drummond that hauled the namibian into touch well played there by des drummond let the man go on the outside, use the touchline as his friend. Great defence, but he's the man that can pull London back into this game. There's the man, Andrews, Andre Stoop. So it's vital now that uh, London keep Workington Penn in their own quarter. Two tackles gone. Here's Armstrong driving his team out of the danger zone. McKenzie. That, that's a key factor, running from the dummy half. They really are splitting this London defence. He'll do that all day, will Phil McKenzie. Good kick. Down the line. The scrum half, Wayne Kitchen. Nice little jink through. Gave himself plenty of time. But that's been a highlight of this working inside so far. There's a way that McKenzie, the hooker, is running from that dummy half position. Workington then ahead by 12 points to 6, the first team ever to compete in consecutive second division finals. They'll be in the first division next season. Will Workington? Great boost for the game in Cumbria. And they really have stuck by the side which finished runners-up to Keithley in Division 3 last year few changes from the side that lost 2016 to Featherstone here at Old Trafford last May. London in possession though, Stewart their captain. Little dink over the top. That was inventive play from the standoff Dixon McIver, but Workington have come up with it in the shape of Mark Mulligan. Play on, says referee Connolly. Marwood from dummy half. And rightly so, Mulligan was not tackled. But it's all itchy fingers out there. Took it well to the full back. Remember this game? The second division final. 
the hors d'oeuvre to the main event the big one between Wigan and Castleford we shall return to Old Trafford tonight at 6.30 to see that match in its entirety and that follows the England international live at Wembley now then here's a decision for the referee he's given the try Stuart Cocker has been awarded the try a long chase downfield he slid in and he got there before Gallagher and Stoop. This is a super try. Well worked. The kick way downfield and Gallagher and Stoop took an eternity to get there. But this man didn't. Look at him set off. That is a great try. Beautiful play. The kick downfield from Marwood. And you'll see Gallagher take his time to come through Stoop, he looked there and that vital second could have cost me he got it down but I'm not so sure he got it down with the arm maybe the chance first but full credit you never give up hope in this game and isn't he happy delighted Stuart Cocker 34 tries now former man from Oldham two tries against London in March so he knows what crossing the try line against the Crusaders is all about. Dean Marwood then. Hush comes over the Old Trafford ground as Marwood takes aim. But that will fade away from the posts. 16-6 though is the gap now. You can see Gallagher's circle there. He's well and truly two yards in front of the try scorer, Stuart Cocker. But doesn't he make up the ground here? Top gear slides with it. Try given. No way in the world the touch judge and referee could see what was happening there. But well taken by Cocker. Pickering collects the kick off on one knee and then picks up pace. Makes 20 meters and more before the three can bring him down great run from Pickering another one coming in here from Armstrong gets away first time from Rotherham who hauls him down at the second attempt McKenzie now for Workington once again the run from the hooker he brings the defense in very tight and a quick play of the ball from Workington and that's what's catching this London defense off guard and the thing about working is Steve is they're trying to play the ball quickly that's a key factor to it but they know every time that the hooker Phil McKenzie runs into the position Brad Heppy losing possession there, bad mistake. But they know that every time he gets in there, they don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to run? Is he going to pass? It's creating a lot of confusion in the London defence. Tremendous tackle from Mulligan on Neville Ramsey. The ball spilled, but it's spilled backwards. Cocker, quick work at the play the ball, struck for it with his feet. What's the referee given here? He's given the knock on and he's given head and feet to Workington. Here he me. Lucky to get away with that one. But what a tackle by the fullback Mark Mulligan on the big loose forward, Neville Ramsey. Ramsey couldn't believe it. Kitchen closed down by his opposite number, McIver. Here it is. This <laughs> what a beauty that was from Mulligan. Possessions level pegging, isn't it? Not too much to choose between the two, but plenty to choose between the two on the scoreboard. 16 6. The second division champions are ahead. Ogland be in possession for them. Looking for a big game today to end a brilliant week for him. Named as the second division player of the year on Tuesday at the Man of Steel dinner. Kitchen, oh, he took a risk. Mulligan, though, got to it. Gallagher did well, got a hand to that. It's play on, and it's down to zero in the tackle count. And Gallagher doing well, following up and bringing down Armstrong. See, they were really stretched there. Logan Campbell, the London centre, took a huge gamble and went for the intercept. Fortunately for London, Workington couldn't make them pay. Jack Byrne trying to put Mulligan through the gap. This is Stoop, who picked up the loose ball. But Byrne is certainly having a big influence on this Workington town. Well, he has the experience, hasn't he? He's been around for quite some time. He knows that when you're leading 16 points to six, you just play basic football. It's London that has to do the chasing, catch-up football. 
They're the side that make the mistakes when you're trying to just push the ball a little bit too quickly. Trying to give it some air out wide. Oh, but Drummond again on Johnson. He's doing a tremendous job. It's there's Drummond on Mark Johnson, the South African winger. Well, he may have made a big mistake to allow London to get the first try, but with defence like that, he's certainly settling the account. Super defence. I make that three great tackles that Drummond's put in on that far side already. Here's Wayne Kitchen. Takes Workington again into the London half of the field. London must feel a little bit like uh, King Canute trying to stem this blue tide, but they've stemmed it there, courtesy of the mistake. Here they come now, with Gallagher. And scrambling defence from working in town brings down the former all-black winger. Ramsey to Chris Whiteley. The entire front row of Workington in there quickly to stop Whiteley in his tracks. Here's the substitute, Luxon. Man there who played cricket for Sussex seconds before finding his rugby league feet. But a knock-on here. Bad mistake from Ramsey. He was trying to get the pass away before collecting the football. Been a problem for them. Not only have they lost two key players, the Crusaders, but I'm afraid the error count is quite high. This is Paul Burns of Workington. It's ten errors, five all. say as the players came out we had the first really heavy downpour of the day here at Old Trafford and it has made the pitch quite greasy and the ball very slippery indeed Armstrong that's good defense from London this time he's got in some good hits as the prop forward Chris Whiteley you have to have a good hit here to stop Pickering that's lovely play Kitchen is there Burn is in support Kitchen wheeling away from Stoop well done, London Crusaders, for keeping him out, but should Kitchen have passed the ball inside? Moved off the mark there, play on, says the referee. Bam! Great defence this time from Rosalind. It was on the last tackle, it's the turnover. For me, Workington have blown a chance there. There's never any doubt about that. The standoff, Wayne Kitchen, really should have passed the football. He's got support on either side, and he tries to go round Andre Stoop. But great scrambling defence from the Crusaders. They could rue the day, Workington. This London side will not give in. Now Ramsey leading by example gets the ball away. They keep it alive well. Here's Sam Stewart. Lovely run from Stewart. Just at the moment he's uh, a little bit without support. Then it arrives from Ramsey. Then it arrived from Johnson, and if Johnson could have pulled that in with his left hand, he was over. Kitchen gets the ball out to Cocker, he's already scored one try. Takes the defender in and out, it was Logan Campbell, but he did enough to hold him up. Well, Ramsey should never have let that ball go. There was never any chance that Mark Johnson was going to get anywhere near it. Johnson had gone through about three seconds beforehand. The word has gone out from the Workington bench and their coach Peter Walsh just to calm things down. 16-6. Byrne who's run the show. Jed Byrne, lovely ball again from him to Oglenby. Oh, Oglenby. He popped the ball up for Paul Burns and Burns just couldn't hang on to it. It's a knock on. And the gap was there. Beautiful pass inside. Oh, the centre Burns, mad with himself. He knows the opportunity was lost. But the way that Workington are keeping the ball alive is excellent. They're running at the angles of the forwards. It's not just one out play. They're stretching the defence and that's play on. The ball bounced out to Marwood. You have to count that as one against the head. Here's Kitchen there, loaded up out wide. Kay is there. Drummond's there. And Drummond is in in the corner. A decisive moment perhaps for Workington Town. Drummond, a blunder at one end, three magnificent try-saving tackles, and now four points. Well, it's rare you see this, you can see how the hooker went through. 
Paul Trenny to Phil McKenzie. One of the rare occasions that you actually see a hooker using his feet. But didn't he do well, Marwood? Long ball out wide, Kitchen linked well, and Drummond was waiting. Tony Cage releases the winger. I thought a little bit too early, but Stoop couldn't stop Des Drummond. Look at this. A little halfback scoots away, runs at the angle. The defense is all at sea. Long ball out wide, the combination. Kitchen gets it to him. Tony Kay gives it pretty early, gives Stoop a chance, but Stoop couldn't complete. So now Dean Marwood will try and add the extra two. It's another difficult angle for the little man. Just didn't quite have the length, but 20 points to six, Workington lead. Great try from Des Drummond, a man who knows what big occasions are all about, a regular for Great Britain in the 80s, the 1984 Lion, and the young player of the year, two years running, a long time ago, 1981 and 82, but he is still a star of the game. Well, he's the man that finished it, but the man who made that try was the leg and the hooker of Phil McKenzie. You saw it on the replay, the way that the hooker went right the way around and struck that ball back out for Workington to win possession. He is pickering. Oh, get out of the way. This fellow's going to be quite a heavyweight in the big league next season. Aim, aiming to, as I was say, Mike, aiming to go up as premiership and championship winners in the one season. They're eager. They're running at the angles. They're full of confidence. It hasn't been the best start for the Crusaders. But you make your own luck in this game. And Workington, to their credit, have scored some fine tries. Mulligan's kick picked up by Stoop. Johnson is the dummy half. He sweeps it inside to... Scott Roskill. Roskill hearts, risky business, Cock is after it, Gallagher got a leg to it. This will be Workington's ball in the shape of Paul Burns. He did the right thing then, did the centre Burns. Just flopped on the ball, realising possession is vital. Hangs on again in the London quarter with Oglenby. Wrapped up by Jeff Luxon. Mackenzie the dummy half, he is Marwood, Jed Burns. Armstrong, the captain, gives it back to Byrne. Such an influence already on this match. Good play once more. He is Drummond. Drummond running straight. And this time, Ramsey is there to take him low down. And Sam Stewart finished him off upstairs. Tony Kay on his own from dummy half. Gets the ball away to Mulligan. Oh, well done, Workington. Kept the ball alive brilliantly. And Mulligan with the try. The crowd is chanting, easy, easy, and it was. Once again, a run from the dummy half. They did not put the man down. Tony Kay releases the fullback. And I'm afraid this London defence is at disarray. There you see, it. no second marker. The centre realises it. It's what they've been doing all this game. The run from the dummy half finished off well. He took on the blind side. Second marker non-existent. Pops the ball up for the fullback and Mulligan does the four-pointer. Mulligan with the try. Workington, who have lost just one of their last 11, their only defeat against their neighbours, Whitehaven, at home by four points to seven. Another kick is missed by Dean Marwood, but Workington are bang on course to become the fifth second division champions in eight seasons to win the double now you see the london player arrowed he's not getting back he's not getting to the second marker and the center realizes it throws the dummy away they go and support is the name of our game super play so the hill that london had to climb has now become a mountain 24 points to six. It's gone according to plan for Peter Walsh and Workington. But for London, it's gone a little sour, I'm afraid, for Tony Gordon and company.
two injuries two crucial injuries to Mark Riley who really does make them tick the scrum half and Scott Carter their hooker are costing London dearly they have had to reorganize and they have no answer at the moment to the running of Workington led by Oglenby and Jed Byrne in particular who has stamped his authority on this final already they find it very easy now Workington to get over the advantage line and there we see McKenzie off on the run Kitchen drills the ball towards the quarter line a nice kick but once again we see the run from the dummy half London just don't know what's coming at them great tactics from Workington Town all credit to their Australian coach Peter Walsh they're getting on with it quick play of the balls they have just blitzed the Crusaders apart Ramsey feeding the scrum now McIver gets the ball away to Logan Campbell Workington so quick so eager they know the feeling of defeat here at Old Trafford from 12 months ago they don't want to go through that again Mark Johnson, 41 tries for the season now. It'll be very interesting what uh, St. John Ellis does in the big one, the Premiership final itself between Castleford and Wigan. Here's Luxon. Remember, a big prize at stake today for these teams, but also the small matter of £500 to the leading try scorer. The international soccer, don't forget, is coming up next on Sky Sports. We're exclusively live at Wembley. And after that, at 6.30, we'll be back here at Old Trafford for Castleford against Wigan. What a day of sport you're getting on Sky Sports today. Here's Drummond, straight over the top of Sam Stewart. 35 years old, there's Drummond. Good clattering tackle by Roslyn. Tony Kay was going nowhere there, and he just lost control of the ball momentarily. It was enough for Roslyn to come steaming in. Here's Kitchen again. This fellow's been an influence, hasn't he? Lovely step from Kitchen, aiming for the corner. He gets away from McIver. Stoops doesn't manage to hang on to him. But the tackle is completed. It's the last moment of this first half. And what a half it's been for Workington Town. London have had to rejig and reshape. But Jed Byrne and Des Drummond have played key parts in what has been an excellent first 40 minutes for the champions of Division 2, who lead by 24 points to 6. You're watching Sky Sports. Here's a preview of June on Sky's three great movie channels. Chapman! With Robert Downey Jr. Get out! Unlawful Entry with Kurt Russell. Jack Nicholson, Easy Rider. I want more. Annette Benning, Valmore. Single white female. Kevin Costner, Whitney Houston, The Bodyguard. If you're not already subscribing, call this number now. 0506 484 777. That's 0506 484 777. The minister's waiting, sir. I'll take over, Boff. Nate, no. what? You'll be much safer with me, sir. Brian. <laughs> This is the most secure car in the department. Do the windows open? Um... Mm. I'd have been perfectly safe with Bob. A Ford. I mean, frankly. I just bought a Granada. They are marvellous cars. You can get up to 1,800 pounds off a new Ford with Barclay Card. Barclay Card. Well, I never... <laughs> on top of the price you work out with the dealer, my, that is interesting. Mm. Ah, some air, Sir Brian. <laughs> Steady on, Sir Brian. Sir Brian? To find out more, Brian. call 0800 111 2. Now at your Vision Express store, get two complete pairs of glasses for the price of one. I came in late in the day, yet I still had two pairs of glasses inside three quarters of an hour. I came to Vision Express with my son and we had four pairs of glasses made for us in one hour. I got four pairs of glasses from Vision Express within the hour. I could hardly believe it was going to be free, but it was and they're great. Two complete pairs of glasses for the price of one. Now at Vision Express. At last, it's electric with number ones from Kraftwerk and Soft Cell. 
Eurythmics. And the full 12 inch of New Order's classic Blue Monday. Timeless hits from an electric era. It's electric out now. Look at the state of this. What am I going to do? Wear the white one. The white one? I'll wash it myself. Have I? Purcell Automatic has always given outstanding results. Oh, man. But now it's even better thanks to a double cleaning action. An action on fat and an action on other tub stains like ketchup and tea. Double action Purcell Automatic. Now with 10% extra free. Here's a new sunflower spread that's lower in fat than most other spreads. St. Ival Gold Sunflower. It has a fresh taste that's light and delicate and low in fat, so you can enjoy it while keeping an eye on your family's health. Low fat St. Ival Gold Sunflower. Tremendous first half here for Workington Town. They lead by 24 points to six at the break against London, who have had to rejig because they've lost two players with injury in that first half, and they really have suffered because of that. Great to be here at Old Trafford, though, for this second division final, London against Workington Town, a match that really does span the length and breadth of Great Britain. And Workington, the champions, Steve-O, on their way to becoming the side that takes the Premiership with them into the big league. Yeah, it's uh, bad luck for London in the fact that they lost their halfback and of course lost their hooker Carter as well. And it's a big problem for them. But to be fair, Workington have played some superb football. They're running from the play of the ball. They're playing the ball very, very quickly. And I'm afraid the London defence is totally confused. Yes, totally confused. But uh, what a start it was. And uh, this is the first Workington Town try. And this fella for me, Jed Byrne, has run the show. Oh, superb first 40 minutes. The way that he throws a dummy there, that is the experience. You see, Andre Stoop had no chance. You never take the dummy, but they often do. Great try, and what an opening start for this game. But London came back, and full credit to them at this stage, they snapped back and touched the, uh, took the lead here. Well, it was a nice kick from Stewart, their skipper, but what on earth was Des Drummond doing there? He certainly made up for it in the first 40 minutes in his defensive qualities, but that was a very bad mistake by the winger. This is the uh, try for Tony Kay, and again, Jed Byrne, the man at the heart of it. Well, it's spinning out of the tackle, it's all about support play, and the centre in for a good try. As you mentioned, the first 40 minutes, Byrne is having the time of his life. This was a great try, and it was the kick from Marwood, but as you picked up in the commentary, Gallagher and Stoop taking an eternity to reach this. Well, you can see Gallagher turning round there when really he should have been taking an extra stride to try to beat him. But full credit to the winger Cocker. He just did not want to give up. And this one, well, put this down to Mackenzie. The beautiful strike against the head. But look at how Marwood just takes him at the angle. Long ball out wide. Good play by the standoff Kitchen. And then the long ball... I thought perhaps he'd unleashed it a little bit too early, Tony Kay, but when you've got a man with the experience like Des Drummond, look at that. There was no way Stoop was going to stop him. That was a well-taken try. He made up for that bad mistake. Here's the last try from Mulligan, the fullback. It's been a problem with them running from the dummy half. You can see how confused the defence is. And the fullback chiming in to score a try. And really, that just set the seal on a magnificent 40 minutes from Workington. The thing is, Workington have been here before against Featherstone Rovers last year. They lost. They know how bad it is to lose and the feeling that they take home with them. They're in no mood to lose today, are they? No, they, they got off with all guns firing, and I expected that they would do. We were talking about the experience. Experience does play a huge part when it comes down to a final. But they haven't had much lady luck with going with them to London Crusaders. To lose two key players, your halfback and the hooker, they control all the attacking play. It's very difficult for the Crusaders certainly is difficult for the Crusaders, but wouldn't it be a boost if they could come back in the second 40 minutes? It's Workington Town who seem at the moment to have this second division final in their pocket. Stuart Cocker's try, bit of slowness by Gallagher and Stoop, but it's all to play for second half, 24 points to six, Workington Town, the champions lead. 
seize the day. You're watching Sky Sports. Good morning. Your first choice with Euro Dollar Car Rental. License okay? Charge card okay? Route okay? RAC backup okay? Instruments okay? Car choice okay? Euro Dollar will help you all the way. Just think Euro Dollar. Toilet Duck now brings you a new fragranced in system block that releases a fresh fragrance every time you flush. Only one trimmer with line auto feed has a roller to guide you as you edge. experience the rough to appreciate the smooth. Guinness Draft Bitter. The smoother, the bitter. Four wheels or two? I want it all. Want it all. Snow or surf? I, I want it all. Twix gives you it all. All the crunchiness of biscuit. All the smoothness of caramel and chocolate. In Twix. Twix. Get it all. Twice. Where I'm going, I can't be sure what they'll be having for breakfast, so I'm packing my own. I'll definitely be wanting bran fibre. No added sugar or salt and 100% whole wheat. So it can only be shredded wheat. Will you be needing anything else, love? No, with this lot and a bit of luck, we'll be fine. Shredded wheat and bite size too. There is no better cereal. Nowadays, computers can tune engines 6,000 times a minute. Each cylinder can have its own fuel injection system, accurate to one thousandth of a second. Suspensions can give cars a grip of iron and a ride like silk. And there are now anti-lock brakes, so advanced they can tell which wheel's on ice and which is on the rocks. You might expect this technology in a high-performance supercar, but as standard in a family saloon? You can with a Nissan, the 1994 Primera. the players but lack direction. Now Venables will prove that England should have beaten the team that stopped them from getting to the World Cup final. What a popular goal that is. 315 today, England take on Norway at Wembley and the only place you can see the game live is on Sky Sports. Seize the day. Half time at Old Trafford, the Wembley of the North, London 6, Workington 24, this second division final living up to its pre-match billing and the champions very much Workington Town in the driving seat at the moment. Des Drummond, what a half he's had. Miss kicked the ball that allowed London in for the try, three terrific tackles on that far side and then a try himself as Workington really have taken this game by the scruff of its neck. John Gallagher, big star, when he came into the big league with Leeds, and still a big star in the capital. But this Stones bitter premiership for the teams in the second division sees London, who are third, trailing the champions, Workington, by 24 points to six. London with their injury problems, they've had to rejig, but they are 40 minutes away from their first ever major trophy. And working to town, of course, 40 minutes away from achieving the championship and premiership double. Mulligan is the man who was running the ball out. 
And let's hear from his coach, Peter Walsh, the Australian, downstairs with Bill. Peter, a dream first half for you. Yeah, very good. You know, uh, you would have told me before the game it would be leading 24-6 at half-time. You know, I thought you are crazy. But the boys are tackling really well. And uh, cheap turnovers is the only thing that's going to let uh, London back in the game. We're going to have to defend the game. We're quite happy at 24-6. That'll still get the players their medal. But, you know, the intensity in defence is tremendous. And two of your old stages, Des Drummond and Jed Byrne, have turned it on for you. Well, that's what it's all about. We had to get guys in the club with experience that have been there and done that. And the guys just breed on their success. You know, it's just great. And uh, we're just hopefully going to finish them off now. Yeah. And the message, presumably, is don't let them back in. No, well, they cheap turnover, give them the six points they've got now. So anything they've got, we've given them. And uh, the main thing is we're just going to plead all our sets of six. And, you know, they've got, they need the ball. We've got the time on the scoreboard, you know. So hopefully that uh, things will work out OK. And we complete our sets of six and, and just go out and defend the second half. Thanks, well, Peter Walsh talking there about defence and Workington have the best defence in either of the divisions. Just 333 points conceded in 30 matches. Tremendous defence from Workington, the champions in blue. Swarming all round, John Gallagher and the London Crusaders in black. Their captain, Sam Stewart. Minute and a half of this second half gone. Workington know that history is beckoning them. Drummond in possession for Workington. He takes on Johnson and gets away from him. Cuts in field through McIver. That's a good tackle though in the end from Roskill. But what a run again from Des Drummond. He's still got the talent. Beautiful jinking run. Going on the outside. It was too fast for Mark Johnson. It really is desperation point now. And that'll be a penalty. No, no not knock on. on. <laughs> In unison, it was a knock-on, Pickering as he fell, according to John Connolly, just simply lost the ball, it wasn't stolen from him, though there could be a debate. No debate as far as I'm concerned, but I'm not the referee. It's desperation stakes now for London, they've just got to throw everything at Workington in the opening ten minutes now, and hope that something will come their way. This is the substitute, Chris Smith for London, using both their subs, Smith and Luxon. It's Riley and Carter who have gone off, scrum half and hooker, two vital positions for London. I'm sure that the words of Tony Gordon, the Kiwi coach in control today for the last time, will be ringing now in the London Crusaders' ears, but he won't like to see that mistake from Stoop. It just hasn't been the Crusaders' day. Ball just going back, you could see that Stoop had to reach for it. Oglenby with that run, and excitement is building up here at Old Trafford. The Castleford players have emerged from the tunnel to soak up a bit of the Old Trafford atmosphere. Wigan Cass follows this, and it comes up on Sky at 6.30 tonight, don't forget. The whole match as live. Wigan Castleford for the Premiership. Wigan going for the treble, Castleford going for the double of Regal Trophy and Premiership. Great match in prospect there, great match in progress here. Pickering with a lovely ball to Mackenzie. Scrambling defence again from London. He's knocked on as the hooker. The impact of the tackle was Smith that came into him. That was really a big hit. Mackenzie could do nothing to hold on to that. Well, he'd be retained possession for Workington, but it was the knock-on that the referee ruled prior to that. Interference there from the second row of Martin Oglenby. And Oglenby disputing the referee's decision. And they have been marched ten yards back, have Workington Town. And Mackenzie was hurt there in that tackle. Logan Campbell trying to get on with it quickly. This is Neville Ramsey. Woof, pickering over the top on Ramsey. He threw a short one as well. And it connected. Let's hope this doesn't get out of hand. This is Rosalind, the second row forward. The news, by the way, from the Crusaders' bench is that the two men off, Riley and Carter, will not return. So London have to play out with what they have as Stoop drops another. Well, that's a big problem for the Crusaders. They know they've got to push the pass. They know they've got to take gambles when you're 24-6 down. And we saw on that occasion Stoop trying to slip the ball out to Gallagher. It just has not been their day. That's the problem. 
that the Crusaders have. Both substitutes limping on the bench. They will be sitting there for the rest of this match. They will not return. So London playing on with the 13 fit players on the field and no one to replace them. Will McKenzie making the mistake for Workington. London have the ball back courtesy of Gallagher. Gallagher running diagonally, bouncing off the chest of Heapy. He felt that. Ramsey, the dummy half. Stewart. Good short ball, but it's all forced the passes for London, and things are just not coming off for them. Logan Campbell then couldn't hang on. Well, you can see the defence. He came off a Workington player, but it went backwards. The impact of this tackling from Workington is extremely soft, strong. They're playing James. to perfection. James, James Pickering is leaving the pitch for Workington. He's had a storming game. He's getting a rousing reception from the working some supporters. He's been replaced by number 14, Peter Riley, a front row forward. And Pickering, I think, has also taken a bit of a knock uh, off the ball, maybe. Uh, maybe so, but uh, Workington able to bring the substitute on. Meanwhile, here's the incident here, and it's the uh, centre Logan Campbell who's all over Martin Oglenby. And the touch judge was quickly on then, Steve-O. Well, I just sense that perhaps it was boiling over, but it's going to go to the Crusaders. Campbell thought for a moment there that the referee, John Connolly, wanted a few words with him. He'd no doubt that the penalty should go to London. Neither did London. They were all lining up. But it was, as you see, it was Oglenby pushing off with the hand and maybe just uh, getting a finger in the eye. Anyway, let's confirm the substitution for you. Pickering is off, and it's Peter Riley who's come on. Just saying, Eddie, that defence has been superb that their coach Peter Walsh was talking about. Not just one man, they're going in in big hits, two and three. Neville Ramsey has not got any socks on. I've never seen that before on a rugby league pitch. Ramsey, the loose forward, the Kiwi, no socks. Once again, we see the force pass. This occasion, the centre, Logan Campbell. It's all desperation stuff, I'm afraid, from the Crusaders. The call was there from the fullback, Andre Stoop. But things are not gelling. Marwood gets the possession from the scrum. Apparently, I was about to tell you a story about Neville Ramsey's socks, but I'll hang on for a moment. <laughs> we think he's cut them off. <laughs> At just below the boot line. Nice impact there from the big prop forward, Chris Widely. He's put in some big hits as well. As you mentioned before, Eddie, it's a pretty steep hill that this Crusader side has got to get up on top. Mulligan hammers the ball downfield. Stoop comes across, stoops and pick it up. But the wall of defenders are there, Burns and Oglenby. Makes no progress, the London fullback. Can Mark Johnson? Well, not with tackling like that, they're eager. Workington Town, there's no doubt about that. Stewart, that's a good ball. Oh, that's a great shoulder charge on Rosalind by Drummond. Roslin. No arguments there. Look at this. Bang. Well, he's an exponent of the martial arts, is the winger Des Drummond. And he showed it to the full extent there. He's about half the size of Rosalind, too. Campbell drill, drills the ball over the top and straight out of play. Things going from bad to worse for the Crusaders. Well, if ever the side would love the clock to be turned back to start all over again. They know the task ahead is nearly unsurmountable. Peter Riley, the substitute. 
Marwood helps it on further. This is Heapy. Scrambling round on the halfway line. Wants to get on with it. And, well, he wasn't allowed to play that ball. Then that's going to be a penalty. Well, it took an age then for John Connolly to award him. Look at the mix-up there. Still wouldn't allow him. Then this one wouldn't allow him again. Ramsey wouldn't let go of the leg, and in the end, he just pushed him to the floor. So it's a penalty to Workington on halfway. And in the meantime, Workington Town have made a change. Jed Byrne has gone off. He's had a great game, and Paul Penrice has come on. So two of the big personalities in the Workington side, Pickering and Byrne, are off to make way for Penrice and Riley, the subs. This is Mulligan, drops the ball under pressure. Play on, says the referee, because Rotherham had it for the Crusaders. Then Ramsey, and he then gives it to Dixon McIver. That was a great tackle there from the substitute, Chris Smith. Ball reefed out, and that's high from, from the second row at Oglenby. Well, they're losing the way a little bit. You can see there, over the top of the shoulders. London will come again then from just inside the Workington half of the field. Penalties going there were 5 3, but the scoreline most certainly isn't. 14 games between these two since the first meeting in November 85. London have the upper hand. They have the upper hand here at the moment. They're in possession with Roskill. Gets the ball to Stoop. He clips it over the top one for Johnson to chase, but Mulligan had positioned himself perfectly. Gets through Ramsey, but doesn't get away from Chris Smith. Good play from Mark Mulligan there. The fullback in the right position at the right time. And what a break. Cocker picks himself up because the tackle wasn't completed. But it is now, courtesy of Roskill and Johnson. Here's Armstrong. Let his side up the steps as beaten finalists 12 months ago. Marwood switches the direction of the attack. Working and quite content to go one out. Use the big forwards. They haven't used the link yet. This is the substitute Penrice. Last tackle here for Workington Town. Mulligan will hoist the high kick. Here's a tester for Stoop. He licked his fingers then as he went for this. And he took it behind his own line, diffused the high kick. And so it will be a tap on their own 20 meter mark. Good play. Took it well. Look at the concentration there. Arms up. Welcome the ball. London back in possession. Then four defeats in January and February cost them promotion. But they have ended this season in style. 14 matches unbeaten, 13 wins and a draw. They've not lost since February, but they're trailing here today. But they staged between them, these two sides, a 20-all draw in March when last we saw them on the big league. I wonder whether London can come back. They've got plenty of time left. They find it very difficult, though, to get through this solid defence. They might hear with Johnson. Johnson with 41 tries. Amazing run. Took a bit of a high one then from Heapy, and the referee agrees. I didn't even touch him, sir. Well, we'll see. Uh, flat of the hand. Either way attempt above the shoulders well spotted by John Connolly now what a tremendous boost it would be to the Crusaders if they could get a try now the runner is the prop forward Whiteley just looking round the Crusaders there's no one there that really is clenching his teeth and clenching his fists and saying come on let's have a go they're all chatting amongst themselves but Perhaps Sam Stewart, the man to raise them. With that ball to McIver, he then hands it on to Roskill. Roskill takes the tackle, and Marwood came in late. Not judged as a flop, though. Here's Andre Stoop. Can Stoop get over? It would be a vital try for London here if they get one. Ball spins into the arms of Ramsey. And the substitute, Jeff Luxon, really wasn't ready for that pass. But that's how close the Crusaders are, 10 metres away from the line. Sam Stewart gets the good ball to Campbell and it takes four to bring Campbell down. That's the last tackle for London. 
Would have been now gone. Stewart's diagonal ball is well read. Perfectly read by Oglenby. He knew the kick was on. He dropped back. Not enough weight behind the kick. Stewart trying to get through on it. But didn't he really well the second rower? Positioned perfectly, wasn't he? Nothing going right, I'm afraid, for the Crusaders. But full credit to them. They're not throwing the towel in. They're still producing the big hits. And what's more, they've penned Workington Town into their own quarter line for five tackles. That's good stuff from London. Really chasing this game now. And Ramsey was after that kick from Mulligan. Bounces once and then into the arms of Stoop. And he will try and run it back immediately. The kitchen was there to wait for him. And kitchen and the other substitute, Peter Riley, brought Stoop down. Johnson to Gallagher. Nowhere for Gallagher to go, so this is Chris Smith. And they've made no progress. They're still on the halfway line. Strong run from Whiteley. 16 and a half minutes, second half gone. No change to the scoreline as it was at half time. Ramsey for the Crusaders. This now is Stewart. They really are missing the talents and the speed of Mark Riley. Rotherham's ball was inside to McIver. It's the last tackle here for the Crusaders. Ramsey hoists the high kick and then sets off after it himself. Mulligan's there, it's too deep. Oh, it bounced. I was going to say it bounces kindly, but it didn't. It nearly did. It bounced and almost came back. Gallagher touched down, but the ball had already gone dead. It was a huge kick, but you can see how the ball nearly came back in. Gallagher tried his best. Well, Workington, they appear to have gone to sleep, but put that down to an eager defence from London in the second half. Mackenzie, good ball to Oglenby. Similar that was to Cocker. Keeps the movement going. Releases the pass all along the ground, it must be said, to Oglenby. London having the better of things in this second half. 56% to 44. But no points, no change from the scoreline as it was at halftime. Mackenzie. Good ball. Kitchen. Mulligan. Trying to keep the ball alive. That bounced off the London arm. It's six to go. Heapy is under pressure and he's lost the ball under that tackle from Roskill. Here's Stewart. That was high. Swinging arm again. Stewart felt that. I think the referee agrees. You can see. Heapy again. Heapy swinging arm. Well, that's the second occasion that a few words have passed between him and the referee, John Connolly. As we walk in a pretty tight rope. Rotherham to restart. The runner was Whiteley. But you can't fault London for their enthusiasm, for their spirit. But you can see there that having to use the forwards all the time. Sam Stewart trying his best to lose forward Neville Ramsey. They've lost their general, haven't they, in Mark Riley, their scrum half, an inspiration. McIver. It means all the difference, doesn't it? when you've got a player that's got a bit of spark, and Mark Riley certainly has got that. Sam Stewart tips that one over the top for Johnson. The ball bounces kindly for him. Oh, he was hauled back by Melbourne. That'll be a penalty try, will it? No, no, the referee's not even given the penalty. For me, Johnson was hauled back then by Marwood. This is not that I agree with you, Eddie, but on this occasion, yes. He was taken out there. Definitely taken out. Trying to get the ball through. There he is. Interfered with. John Connolly would have none of it. Should have been a penalty at least. As it is, working to rim possession with Oglenby. Well, there you can see there. Marwood definitely took the man out. It has not been London's day. Not yet, anyway. Here's Penrice. Midway through this second half a quarter of the game to go Marwood in possession now it's with Mulligan he'll clip it downfield 
That will eat up the clock. If it found touch. Good thinking, though, by the fullback, Mark Mulligan. He said, let's get out of here. Fingertip control from Gallagher. James Pickering comes back onto the field. That's the roar and the applause in the background. The big number eight for Workington. He returns in place of his captain, Buck Armstrong. Credit London, they're keeping this ball alive. Johnson picks himself up. It's Rosalind who's the dummy half. Here now is Sam Stewart. Turning and looking. See, he was looking then for support. No one was coming on to him. The ball just crept out of his fingers and Pickering had hold of it. Kitchen now. Certainly leading by example is a Kiwi, Sam Stewart. Trying to keep the ball alive. He knows the desperation. He knows that they've got to keep trying. They've certainly done that the second half. A big effort from the Crusaders. Peter Riley. He lost that. That's a knock on. Cumbrian representative Peter Riley won't be happy with this. And you see, lost control. Didn't appear to be any interference. And another London player is uh, flat out. It's uh, Whiteley. Chris Whiteley, the prop forward, formerly with Salford. He joined in August 1992, formerly with Wiggins and Pats. Johnson, dangerous winger. No wonder the first division scouts have been taking a look at this fella and Drummond and Logan Campbell still having a go and oh dear me Logan Campbell just lost his rag then and he came over the top of the touch judge to have a couple of shots at Drummond and Drummond sticks out the chin and looks at the referee and John Connolly will sort this out but it's been bubbling here that we see the good run and the good tackle really was a hit from Des Drummond and you can see Campbell wasn't too happy about the fact that Drummond came again. Touch Judge did well, didn't he? Get out of the way. And Drummond's being called out by the referee. It's going to be a, a London penalty. Well, Drummond threw first. Then it was tit for tat to get into it. Touch judge tried in vain. I think the touch judge may have given Campbell a neat little elbow in the uh, motion there. As a result of that, it's a penalty to London, and they will come again with Whiteley. Ramsey, McIver, the runner is Sam Stewart. He misses him out and finds Andre Stoop instead. That's a good ball out wide to Roskill. Roskill heading for the corner, but he should have passed the ball out wide. Such of naivety in my book about the London play. Well, he threw the dummy and committed himself, but Paul Burns was on hand there to take him ball and all, and look at the scrambling defence, right in the touch. He's not giving up the ghost. Big, strong centre, Roskill. Referee wants the scrum to reform Workington's head and feed. He runs it out. Marwood. Collard he was by Luxon. Mackenzie the dummy hard. A different defence from London this half. Workington was strolling through quite a few of the tackles in the first half. And they're finding it difficult today in the second. Yes, it's a, a much better defensive effort from this London team. And one of the injured stars is A.B. Ikokyu. 
brother of the Norwich City striker Effen Okoku, and he is downstairs now talking with Bill. Abby, two players, two key players off injured early on, and really that seems to sum up your whole afternoon. That's the start. Two, as you say, two, two key players. I think it was important that they stayed on the pitch. We had to readjust, and we made too many unforced errors in the first half. It's been a good defensive effort so far in the second half, and I think. There's still time, but you've got to be optimistic. You've got to be optimistic. And do you think you have legitimate claims for a, a penalty a penalty try? Definitely. I think Mark I think Mark was obstructed, definitely. And again, that just helps set you on the set you on the set the ball rolling. But uh it's been difficult. It's been difficult. Greasy ball, but then both teams have got to play with a greasy ball. So we just gotta we just gotta battle to the end. Must be a difficult one to sit out as well when you're on the sidelines at a game like this at Old Trafford. It is well the whole atmosphere, the occasion sitting it out is, it is difficult you know we we came here as a team it's scoop and he's got it out to johnson and johnson gets in for the try that's the try it's his 42nd of the season and mark johnson from stoop scores the try which who knows could well pull london back into this match well they've been wanting to get the ball out wide it was a long ball from the standoff dixon mckiver then the big centre sends out wide, Stoop had linked through and released a beautiful pass. It had to be scored this. Not so sure that he did, but either way, the try has been given. It really has to dive over into the corner, but look at that lovely long ball there from Dixon McIver. Stoop released it at the right moment. There's nothing that Drummond can do. And he slides right into the corner. Did he get any forward downward motion with the arm? I think he loses it just here. Yeah, but the upper body is enough to roll over, so that is the try. And that could be a try worth 500 smackaroos. Gallagher with a tremendous touchline conversion. The four becomes six, and London are alive again. 24-12. And just let me pick up on that point again about the money for Mark Johnson. He now has 42 tries for this season. Sinjinellis is on 40, and the top try scorer picks up at the end of the campaign 500 pounds. And the title, obviously, of top try scorer 1993-4 season. And it could just be that Mark Johnson has secured that. Not only that, that could be the try that could lift the Crusaders to a bigger effort. It's been a tremendous start in the second half for them. The defence has got tighter. They're building in confidence. They knew it was an uphill battle. But can they stage one of the most remarkable comebacks? Well, this second division final over the years has produced remarkable comebacks. It's produced narrow victories. Oh, Johnson then knocks on. The ball just didn't quite reach him, bounced in front of him, and he couldn't keep hold of it. One minute of glory, next it's failure. The tension is mounting. They are two converted tries away, just 12 points. Wayne Kitchen, brought to the ground by McIver. They have 11 minutes. It's been done before. Can they do it again? But it's working to in possession now with McKenzie. Gets the ball out to Drummond. And Johnson this time falls. There's Drummond down. Here's Brad Heapy. Swarming in the tackle now, these London players. They are there, but they don't have the time of their life, those two wingers. There's Drummond and Mark Johnson. They've been chatting at each other all through the game. But it's important now that Workington just play out their full six and then apply the pressure oh that's not the best uh, tactics in the world from Heapy and Drummond thinks he has retained possession for his side but the referee said it was on the last tackle it's London's ball well there was a drop ball and a kick through you can see that the man didn't play at the football the football played onto the man the referee It's Rosalind for London. Well, it took yeah. London quite a, a time to 
start making the breaks, but they've realized that if they can get the ball out wide, there's just that chance. Well, I tell you, this is a, a team that can produce spectacular try scoring efforts, London. And here they come again, and it's Mark Johnson, who is through two, but not through three. He's grounded on the halfway line. But only Keithley in either division have bettered their 842 points prior to today. So London have it in their armory to score tries and points aplenty. And they have 10 minutes to score 12. That will only level matters, of course. They will need another one to win it. Nice kick from the loose forward, Neville Ramsey. You can see that when they lost Mark Riley, they had to readjust. And it's been the loose forward, Ramsey, and the second rower, Sam Stewart, that's virtually taken the key roles. Tony Kay is injured on the sideline for Workington and is receiving attention. It will allow Jed Byrne to return. Jed Byrne must be one of the candidates for man of the match, despite the fact that he's been sitting out for a wee while. Had a growing influence on this match, particularly in the first half. And now he comes back on again to perhaps catch the eye of the judges once more. Jed Byrne. Third successive Old Trafford final for him. Try for Oldham in 92 in defeat. Beaten last year. Is it third time lucky for Jed Byrne as he returns? Meanwhile, smart move that by their coach Peter Walsh, realizing they need someone with experience out there just to calm the nerves a little bit. They don't have to force the pass, just respect possession, use a big kick downfield. It may not be pretty, but it could win them the trophy. Here's McKenzie. Had so many glorious days, Phil McKenzie with uh, witness four successive Premiership finals. 1988 to 81. Two on the run now. He is Pickering. Workington, by the way, cannot make any more changes, but Jed Byrne has come on, and is he going to make a crucial contribution to this match? He is, because Cocker has scored the try. His second of the afternoon, and that is the try. Try number 35 of the season for Cocker that will surely win the Premiership now for the Cumbrians. Beautiful ball out from Dean Barwood and look at the strength of this prop forward, James Pickering. Two to get to him, super support play. And the man who's just come back on the field to play, Jed Byrne, the experience, he wanted to score himself but release at the right time. Forward perhaps, who knows, pretty bad on that angle. But Stuart Cocker was not going to hang around to find out. It was superb play, but when you've got the strength of a man like that and can still get the ball away, that is beautiful prop forward play. Good support. You can see Byrne to the cheek and try to take on Stu. He releases the ball to mine that was forward, but Cocker raises the arm, salutes the try. Little bloody nose from Stuart Cocker. Dean Marwood is clapping his hands because a few seconds ago he clipped over the conversion and so the match is now firmly back in Workington's pockets 30 points to 12 champions are ahead we have six minutes remaining a brave effort second half from London but there will be no comeback now a great boost for rugby league in the county of Cumbria in the shape of Workington Town back in the big league we'll see them on Sky next season. And it will be a question, Steve-O, of whether now they can push on from this and compete with the Wiggins, the St. Helens, the Leeds, the Bradfords, the Castlefords in the big time next season. Well, they showed in the first half, they took control, took their chances. Support play was good, the defence was excellent. And if they can con control that and continue on with the same effort, yes, they can compete. Oh, Stoop took that brilliantly. It was Mackenzie's towering bomb. Stoop has set them free again here. Credit London with this tremendous second half display. It's going to be Workington's day, but London finishing with a flourish. Stoop, who started this move. A towering kick it was from Mackenzie, and Stoop raced from his line and set this attack in motion. It's not finished yet. 
Here's Stewart. Turns the ball back to Dixon McIver. Workington having been a moment ago on the attack and now very much on the defensive. Ramsey to the substitute Luxon. Luxon to Stoop. Stoop to Logan Campbell. Campbell running straight for the post. Oh, great try! And everyone in this Old Trafford Stadium applauds that effort from Logan Campbell. And so they should. He's worked hard as a saint to Logan Campbell and fully deserved it. Long ball out wide. And you could see there the Pickering committed himself early. They went far too high. And Cocker couldn't get to him. But look at the strength of this man. Fully deserved. Second effort got him over there. Logan Campbell with the try from right under the posts. His 15th of the season for the New Zealander. And John Gallagher dropping back has kicked the conversion. But look at the way Stu took that high kick downfield from McKenzie. One of the highlights of the game. He's had a fine match as a fullback. It really has been spectacular from both sides. But you've got to give credit to Workington. But you cannot deny this London side. They have shown a lot of guts and determination. They were on the rack early when they lost two of their key players. The hooker Scott Carter, halfback Mark Riley. And to say you lose two key players like that, they've done an admirable job. They have indeed. You have to wonder what might have been had Mark Riley not been forced off because of the injury. Certainly an influential player in this Crusaders outfit. But it is a terrific boost for the game in London that this team is here at all. And let's hope they can kick on now. Collision time. Ramsey and Pickering. Biff Bang Wallop. This is what the big league's about. Bang! It was a big one. London in possession still on the halfway line with the man who scored the try, Logan Campbell. Stewart, Ramsey, and here's the substitute, Chris Smith. Good ball, they're not packing in, are they? It's been an amazing performance, especially when you look at the fact that both Sam Stewart, the second rower, Neville Ramsey, the loose forward, they've taken the pivot roles. They're doing the halfback's job. And there's Ramsey leading the charge on Mark Mulligan. Workington then in possession, Cocker, two tries from him. He releases the pass. He is Marwood. He's another man who must be a candidate, along with Kitchen, for man of the match. The captain is Colin Armstrong. He's off the field at the moment, but I wonder if he's preparing his winner's speech for the dinner tonight. Let's hear from him now with Bill. I think, Colin, you're having one or two uh, palpitations just in these closing minutes. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, we're throwing the ball about as though we're getting beat here when we should just be chucking it up under our arm and taking it up for five and kicking right down to the corners and hopefully hopefully find in touch but really you did the hard work in in the first half didn't you i think then when this game was decided yeah we played very well in the first half and uh tackled well and controlled the ball it's, the, it's been quite crazy but uh, i think we played very well in the first half the second half london have come out and shown what they can do as well to be fair for them to lose two key players early on in the game i mean that decidedly tilted things your way i think yeah i mean they lost scott carter and uh, mark Riley which um, I suppose is uh, deterred the way they play, but I'm um, taking nothing away from our lads, and hopefully we can go on to do the job. Great day for you. Well done, Colin. Thanks very much, Bill. Yeah, great day for Colin Armstrong. Third time lucky for him. A loser with Hulkingston Rovers, a loser 12 months ago with Workington, a winner here today. But London ending with a flourish, and Rosalind trying to use his power to get to the line. I can't help thinking this is a great boost for the London side and the fact that they will be backed by all the money from the Broncos next season, it all goes well. Johnson, hat-trick! Hat-trick for Johnson! 43 for the season. Magnificent effort from the South African winger. And the fat is in the fire for St. now. Well, they've called the Workington defence again out wide. That has been a key factor in the second half. 
and Stoop delayed that pass to perfection. And Roskell sends in the man for the hat trick. It's all about the links, and there's that man again, Neville Ramsey. He really has played an important pivot role. Stoop chimes in there. It was a perfect pass from Roskell, and you can't get any better finishing than that. Mark Johnson equals the feat by Darrell Powell of scoring a hat-trick in this second division premiership final. London 22, Workington 30, Gallagher missing with the conversion attempt. We're in injury time. It's Workington's day, but Steve-O, let's emphasise that point. What an afternoon for London, the game in the capital, and with the Broncos coming in next year, who knows what might happen. It's been a great advert for our game, and that it is Workington, let's not forget the winners. Mulligan and Jed Byrne hug each other in delight. They were here as losers 12 months ago. They now go back to Cumbria on the long journey north to Workington as winners. But Andre Stoop has played his part in an excellent second division final. Great spirit on the field. Who knows what might have happened had Riley and Scott Carter been out there from start to finish. But it is Peter Walsh and Workington's day. The Workington coach who will take his men into the big league next season. They'll have to strengthen, I don't think there's a doubt about that. They'll have to spend some money and bring new players in. But this is a terrific day for the men from Derwent Park. 22 points London. 30 points to Workington. It's Workington's day, uh, but what a second-half performance from London Crusaders. 30 points to Workington, 22 London. It's Workington Town who go home with the second division premiership to add to their second division title. And there it is, bedecked now with the blue and white ribbons of Workington Town the second division premiership trophy and Workington will become the sixth name on that trophy and aren't they having a day out in Manchester just what they wanted and up they come to collect the Stones for the championship trophy. A little kiss, and it's all theirs. Colin Armstrong, three times, and the third time lucky here at Old Trafford. Phil McKenzie has tasted the winning champagne with Witness here in the past, and now he'll taste it with Workington Town. Great advert for the second division here on Sky Sports this lunchtime. The big one follows Wigan against Castleford. You will see that later on on Sky Sports at 6.30, don't forget. The whole match as live. That follows England-Norway, which comes up next here on Sky Sports, live and exclusive at Wembley Stadium. James Pickering one of the Workington Town heroes, and they are going to milk this moment for a long time yet to come, I fancy. Let's go downstairs to Bill. In a moment, we shall have one of the Workington heroes. They're all engaged in the celebrations at the moment, but Mark Johnson, what a day for him. Three tries in the final. 43 tries now for the season. He's equal the record set by Darrell Powell, who has scored hat-tricks twice in the Division 2, deciding here at Old Trafford. Johnson has now done it for Crusaders. We can go downstairs now to Bill with Brian Marble. Dean, congratulations. Just a bit nail-biting towards the end there. It like was, you know, if it had got me kicked early on, it might have been, you know, won a bit earlier, but all credit to London, they came back well and they pushed us right to the end.
But it's a terrific end to what's been a great season for Workington. Oh, it's been a great season. We're a close-knit bunch of lads, you know. We're all best mates off the field and everything, and we've just stuck together and we've come up with the reward. And do you think that this is a good stepping stone to go into the big league on? Well, I hope so, you know. There's, there's a few players what I'll try to sign to get to strengthen the squad, but the base of the squad's here and, you know, we're all good mates and hopefully we'll pull through and keep in the first division as well. Cheers, thanks a lot. Dean Marwood from Workington Town. They've got great hopes of doing something in the big league next season and with supporters like this, well, believe me, anything is possible. They love their big league up there in Cumbria and they're dancing and they're singing and they're going to enjoy this moment and this day will go down in Workington's history. They are double winners. Well done to them. Let's hear from Mark Johnson now. Hattrick hero for w London Crusaders. Mark, personally, a, a great afternoon for you. Yes, um, got three in the end. Um, I thought we left it a bit late, but uh, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's all over now, so... Uh, it's a case of if only. If only Mark Riley and Scott Carter had been on, it could have been a very different story. Well, you know, when you get to this, to this standard, you can't say if only. I mean, um, you know, we didn't have the depth... Uh, it was a pity that they both went off two key players, but um, what can we do? We tried our best, and uh, good luck to Workington. They did well. Target now is going to be joining Workington in the big league, presumably. Well, we'll see. Um, nothing's. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure yet. And do you think that hat trick's enough to clinch the top try scorer award? Well, um, I hope so. We'll see how it goes. I'm not sure. You never know with Martin in the fire. You can pull anything out the bag, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you very much. It's been great. Well done, Mark Johnson, and he'll become the first South African for, well, at least three decades we make it to top the try-scoring lists if Singinellis, Martin of Fire and company don't get close to him. As Drummond has had a great day here at Old Trafford too. It's Workington's day. My word, Steve-O, don't they deserve these moments of glory because it's, it's a long, hard season in the big league. It's a long, hard season down there in Division 2 as well. It certainly is, but full credit to both sides and the crowd giving both teams a standing ovation, and rightly so. They really looked dead and buried, did the Crusaders at half-time. But the glory goes to that man, Colin Armstrong, proudly lifts the trophy. A great advert for our game. London's fight back in the second half. It was incredible. And I'm sure that Workington would be very relieved indeed that they scored that one try late in the second half that just took them that step too far from the London Crusaders. By the way, it's Dean Marwood who picks up the Tom Bergen Trophy as man of the match. Coming up tonight at 6.30 then, we have the Premiership final for you, the big one. It's Castleford against Wigan. Will Castleford repeat their success? in the Regal Trophy Final. Find out only here on Sky tonight, 6.30. Coming up next, though, England against Norway, exclusively live at Wembley. Terry Venables, England side, up against Norway. And should we or shouldn't we be going to the World Cup? Well, Workington are going home with a trophy in their cabinet. Tremendous day for them. Well done, Workington Town. If you thought Bart had pulled some outrageous stunts... I got stitches! ...then get ready for his greatest ever. Hull are slipping perilously close to the second division.